Hey everybody, Nate Nanzer, Commissioner of the Overwatch League. How about this jacket, huh? It's an honor to be on this stage with you at BlizzCon, where exactly a year ago we announced the Overwatch League. It's amazing that we're now just a, a month away from launching our inaugural season. It's, it's actually kind of insane. The Overwatch League was a crazy idea a few of us had a while back, and it's completely unbelievable to be standing here in front of you tonight. A lot has come together for the league over the past year, and I'm excited to share that everything that we've been working on. We knew we wanted to create a global eSport league that focuses on stability for our players, where they can make a living as professionals. A league that inspires you to root for your favorite teams and debate their merits with friends and colleagues. A league that forges deep alliances and builds off already existing rivalries. A league that offers opportunity for talented competitors to test and push our assumptions about how the game is meant to be played. And most importantly, a league that you can be proud to be a part of. We've been building on the idea that Overwatch Esports was born to be global, to support players at all level of competition, and to embody not only the future of esports, but the future of sport itself. 2017 was about building the foundation to support making that vision a reality. This past year, we introduced the Open Division, an online tournament series where amateurs can get their first taste of organized esports. We had, we recently had the championships, we had some uh, awesome performances, some even better team names. My favorite, uh, congrats to the European champions, LFT OWL. We've seen talented teams and their players rise to the top of the regions all over the world in tournaments such as Overwatch Apex in South Korea, the Overwatch Premier Series in China, the Overwatch Pacific Championship, which is played at the Blizzard Stadium in Taiwan, and Overwatch Contenders in Europe and North America with the finals, the grand opening event of the Blizzard Arena in Los Angeles. Finally, we expanded on last year's Overwatch World Cup, and we hit the road again this year for four live group stage events that took place in Shanghai, Sydney, Katowice, Poland, and Los Angeles, culminating in the playoffs here at BlizzCon. I hope you were able to get into the arena. It was an incredible experience. Uh, and I have a special surprise here. Uh, first, congrats. first congrats to Team USA, uh, who I think did us all very proud. But congrats to third place team Sweden, who did an excellent job. Uh, so you can catch all of the Sweden players uh, in the Overwatch League next year. Uh, congrats to second place team Canada, carried by T-Mobile MVP XQC. One XQC fan. And now, thank you. I would now like to introduce your 2017 Overwatch World Cup champions, South Korea. And Mora. All right, right here, right here. Perfect. That's good, right there. All right. First, Sebai Obi, who you can see next year playing for the New York Excelsior. Mono also will be playing for the New York Excelsior. Zumba, star tank for the Seoul Dynasty. Jae Hong, best Anna in the world, maybe. We'll be playing for the Seoul Dynasty. Toby will also be playing for the Seoul Dynasty. And finally, I hope everyone got a chance to see Flower yesterday. I think. People always ask, can you carry an Overwatch? If you caught Hanamura yesterday, I think the answer is yes. 
Uh, Flower, I think we're super excited to see him go back to Korea, play one more year, and we're all super looking forward to when he turns 18 and is going to unleash that on the Overwatch League in Season 2. One more round of applause for these guys. Would you uh, like to say some words to the fans back home? Uh, 한국에 계신 팬들한테 한 말씀 해주실 수 있을까요? 일단은 시차가 많이 날 텐데 이제 새벽부터 우리 팀을 응원해 주셔서 너무 감사하고요. 이런 자리가 진짜 다 덕분인 것 같아요. 팬들 덕분이죠. Uh, I can't thank you enough uh, for the fans in Korea. I know it's very early in the morning out there, but we could, we, we could have never done this uh, without your support. Thank you very much. One last time, 2017 World Cup champion, South Korea. And Moira. All right. That was a great recap. So all of these tournaments, all of these victories, all the blood, sweat, and tears from these players, and all of your passion has led to this. The Overwatch League inaugural season. Over the past year, the Overwatch League office has been working tirelessly so that when this league launches, it will be worthy of your pride. I know that it felt quiet for a lot of the year, but behind the scenes, we spent countless hours working to build the foundational documents for this league, the charters, the rules, all of the materials that allowed us to forge 12 amazing partnerships with 12 incredible ownership groups. They are just ex as excited as we are to launch this league and take esports to the next level. The Overwatch League represents a different direction than esports have taken in the past. With our city-based structure, it was important for us to work with our 12 team owners to create the right branding. Colors and images that would represent them to their city, define their presence in the Overwatch League, and inspire generational fandom. The Overwatch development team was heavily involved in this process because we knew all of these elements would eventually need to be in the game. So it was important for the game's designers and artists to help drive that vision. Coming up with a completely new brand is not easy, let alone 12 but it was completely worth it. And now after all that work, we have a lot to show you. I want to run through your Overwatch League inaugural season teams. First, the Boston Uprising. <laughs> New Yorkers in the house. Next up, the Dallas Fuel. Our southern team, the Florida Mayhem. <laughs> Next up, the Houston Outlaws. Across the pond, the London Spitfire. If you're lucky enough like me to live in Southern California, you get two teams. First up, the Los Angeles Gladiators. <laughs> also representing LA, the Los Angeles Valiant. <laughs> Home to two of our players from the South Korean team, the New York Excelsior. <laughs> Philly, where are you at? Philadelphia Fusion. <laughs> Next up, the San Francisco Shock. <laughs> over, <laughs> over in Asia, the Seoul Dynasty. And finally, representing China, the Shanghai Dragons. We've divided these 12 city-based teams into two divisions, the Atlantic and the Pacific. Divisions make a lot of sense to us. Our teams are global with players from all over the world, and we want to schedule those teams' matches to, sh to suit their home audience's time zone. 
This allows us also to expand much more effectively in the future as more teams are added to the league. In the Atlantic Division, we have London, New York, Boston, Philly, Florida, and Houston. In the Pacific Division, we'll have Shanghai, Seoul, San Francisco, both Los Angeles teams, and Dallas. But what's a league without players? We've seen top players capture our imagination in tournaments across the globe, and we want to ensure that if they're among the best in the world, they can compete in the league regardless of geography. That's why no region locking is so important to us in the Overwatch League. For it to be the pinnacle of competition in Overwatch, there can't be any borders. We have juggernauts from South Korea, some of whom you just met, many of them already legendary in the sport. Fleta, Carpe, Profit. Got to keep an eye on those guys. I can't wait to see what kind of a player Sinatra turns out to be in a couple years, battling against players like Lynxer. Unko, Zenyatta is second to none, and I know that the entire country of France will be cheering him on all the way. Tivik from Sweden, Mistakes from Russia, Custa from Australia, Eco from Israel, Hydration from Brazil. In total, we have set, uh, 113 players uh, just coming from 17 different countries who will all descend on Los Angeles for the inaugural season. A global community of professionals for a truly global league. Let's talk about when you'll see these superstars. During the regular season, each team will play twice per week across four game days. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with three matches played each day. We mixed up the start times each day so that we can reach as many of you around the world as possible. Let's take a look at week one and see how our schedule is gonna break down. So opening week kicks off January 10th and we're starting it off with a cracker. San Francisco versus Los Angeles. <laughs> Next up, Shanghai will take on the LA Gladiators, and we got a spicy one at 8 p.m., the Dallas Fuel versus the Seoul Dynasty. On Thursday, we'll see London face off against Florida, Philly face off against Houston, and at 6 p.m. Pacific, we'll see Boston against New York. On Friday, LA plays Dallas, Florida plays Boston, and San Francisco, Shanghai rounds out the Friday night show. And then finally, on Saturday of opening week, we'll have London face off against Philly, New York, and Houston, and we're wrapping up opening week with Seoul taking on the LA Gladiators. We put a lot of work into this schedule. We think we've come, we think we've come up with a schedule that really maximizes your ability as fans from around the world to engage with this content. As you can see, we have games that take place in the late evening so that fans in Asia are able to watch them the next morning and games on the weekend so that our European fans can watch at a good time. During the regular season, teams will be competing for playoff spots, which will be determined by each team's record for the entirety of the season. However, seasonal play will be broken up into four stages, each of which will run for five weeks and end in a title match for that stage. So why are we doing that? <clears throat> three reasons. For the game, for the players, and for the fans. So let's go through those three reasons. First, uh, as you know, Overwatch has 16 maps. Asking pro players to show up and be ready for all 16 maps at any given time is a lot to ask. And it's really gonna lower the quality of gameplay. So to mitigate this issue, each stage will have a pool of eight maps. Second, the players, when we move to home and away, uh, and these matchups, when Seoul plays LA, is taking place in either Seoul or LA, we wanna have a schedule in place that allows for natural breaks. We wanna ease the strain of international travel on our players. <clears throat> Lastly, and importantly, the fans. While teams will be battling for the best overall record across the regular season, the stage progress will reset every five weeks. If a team performs badly in stage one, there's motivation for reset for stage two. Teams will have four distinct opportunities during the season to either maintain their consistency or make a comeback, which will also come with their share of $125,000 in team performance bonuses for that stage. That's a half a million dollars that's up for grabs just across the four stages. And as we stated before, a minimum of 50% of all team performance bonuses go to the players. This season will be played at our Los Angeles arena, which you can see 
I don't know if you caught it on Contenders. Looks pretty sweet. I guess the logo looks sweet. Oh, there's the pictures over there. The season will run from January 10th to June 16th. And if you want to be there for the action, tickets for the preseason, which starts on December 6th, will go on sale Monday. Be sure to follow at Overwatch League on Twitter for more information. So playoff dates. Playoffs will begin on July 11th and will host a championship in a separate larger venue outside of Los Angeles to be determined. If you caught any of the World Cup matches here at BlizzCon, you saw the updated spectator treatment. The Overwatch team has been working incredibly hard to create an excellent viewing experience and the improvements you have seen at BlizzCon will be the standard for the Overwatch League. Let's take a minute and hear from the development team about these exciting new features. Obviously, we're doing the dress rehearsal today for Overwatch World Cup. For the first couple of matches, we're going to be doing a lot of testing of match pausing and resuming as we try and troubleshoot specific cases that we think we're going to run into during World Cup. All right, lot to do today. Let's make a great game. We love the esports community, and I think that this is kind of the first time that I feel like we really have had a chance to give to the community the kind of esports experience that we wanted to give. Esports is where some of our most passionate and most engaged players are. That community helps us make really informed decisions about changes that we need to make to the game, whether they're from a feature standpoint or from a balanced perspective. Esports was always kind of the other side of the coin. There's also a huge community out there that just enjoys watching awesome like esports action. We try to view it not just as developers, but as spectators. It just builds excitement around the office. Like, it's fun coming in on Monday, you know, going like, do you watch all the games during this weekend? Like, it's just fun. Like, it's a, thing, it's a fun thing to be part of. I like it, let's get this on! Our game is fast-paced. Is everything is flashing on the screen. Everyone wants your attention. Uh, so one of our main tasks this time around was to figure out how to make that better. One of the features that we added was team uniforms. My favorite feature is the team uniform system, the ability to dynamically change the, the colors within the editor. Play of the game. We took the effects of the game and team colored them so that they matched the team uniforms. Everything from the hero skills to the UI and everything in between has been customized per team. <laughs> As a viewer, you're like, oh, well, in the kill feed, I saw D.Va kill five people. I wish I could have seen that. So instant replay really allows us to go back to that moment in time and curate that moment and let us look at it from a couple of different angles. Instant replay allows the observers to go back in time and re-watch an event. Observers can load up the instant replay for that and watch it from any different angle they want. They can watch it in slow-mo. We can just load up that moment in an instant replay and show it off again. We need a solution to be able to watch some of the almost unwatchable heroes like Tracer or Gang. One of the ways we did that is by doing the uh, third-person smart camera. With a smart camera, you can focus on what's going on in the action, essentially where the heat of the shot will be. I think the top-down map for observers and for casters is going to be particularly important and is a tool, actually the tool, that I wanted most as an analyst when I cast the game. This was really, first and foremost, designed to be a tool for you guys. Like, it was yeah. not a, oh god, we gotta get this up on the broadcast. It was, yeah. observers and casters need this, like, to do their job, right? Yeah. So, I think it just makes the broadcast so much better. I know with the NFL commentators, there's like a day during the week where they just get to sit down with the team and just talk to them for an hour. I think that content creators, coaches, teams yeah. that want to learn, it's super valuable for them to get better. Statistics will now be tracked across multiple matches, so you can really see things like trends of a player. Is a player getting worse as the series are going on? Is he getting much better? What really makes it a great sport is the stories and the drama of the players behind you know, the people that are actually doing the controlling. I think as a color caster, being able to have those stats real time, that's huge to give kind of context to the game. I think statistics let you be able to enjoy the game from a perspective of, hey, I really like this team and here's why. I can really tell you that this player on this team, I think he's the best D.Va player in the world and I can prove it. With stats, you can objectively say, that player is actually the best in the world right now. Because really, like eSports, yes, it's a game, yes, 
you know, it's a sport, you know, the competition is super important. But really, at the end of the day, it's about like the people and telling the story of those people, and that's what we're really super excited about, all these features. You know, Overwatch Esports is really evolving all the time. We're not done. We have a huge list of things to get through. You're going to be seeing new features come into play. You're going to be seeing improvements made to our existing features. We know that every event should be better than the last, and we're going to keep building on top of what we've already delivered for Esports. You can really expect that the Overwatch team is going to be fully backing the uh, Esports experience. Let's hear it for Team 4. Stuff is so sick. The Overwatch dev team believes so strongly that the quality of Overwatch the game should be reflected in the eSports experience, and it really shows with how much they put into these features and skins. I want to go into what you just saw in a bit more detail because not all these features are forward-facing. A lot of them were specifically made to make the viewing experience smoother, more efficient, and to remove the likelihood of human error. The, Overwatch, the, the, team's, the team's goal is really to make Overwatch as fun to watch as it is to play. First, and I, I think the most obvious one, and one of my favorite things to talk about is the team uniform. This is actually, I think, Dallas Fuel uh, versus Seoul Dynasty, what that will look like in the game. Now, when we see, say, team uniform, we're not just talking about the uniform. Uh, we're talking about the entire viewing experience. It's changed through a team's specific color palette. This applies to the UI with team colored nameplates and health bars, the in-game effects, so you know which Zarya just launched that Graviton surge, for example, and of course, the hero skins. You've been seeing these hero uniforms before on our team branding announcements, but we're about to double them up for you. All teams in the Overwatch League will have both home and away uniforms. Home colors are designed to be more vivid and bright, and away colors will be paler. We feel that this is gonna help you really recognize the teams at a glance when you tune in. We know that you're excited about these team uniforms, so we're working hard to find a way for you all to show your support in-game for your favorite team in the future. Next up is a feature that I think is actually pretty groundbreaking for watching Overwatch, and it's the third-person smart camera. This is meant to follow behind and over the shoulder of a hero and tracks in a very smooth fashion where the action is taking place. This is a really great tool to watch highly mobile heroes uh, that have been really watched, hard to watch in the past in first person like Genji and Tracer. Next up is a pretty awesome feature you might have seen on the World Cup broadcast this weekend. Uh, the top-down map view. This has been created specifically for our color commentators, uh, observers, and analysts. And it helps the observers know where the action is and gives them a, a top-down vantage, allowing them to keep track of flanking routes, status effects, and general positioning. This feature is, next feature is pretty amazing. We call it instant replay. So you know how there's big team fights in Overwatch? They happen a lot. Sometimes you miss what happened. This allows us to load an instant from any match, go back, rewind it, twist it around, turn it. Uh, instant replays, as you know, are really a staple in traditional sports broadcasts. But unlike traditional sports, if we miss something with the camera, we can go back. The game didn't miss it. Every single event shows up in the feed, and our observer team can click on that, load the replay, send it to the broadcast to make sure that we never miss a sick quad kill. Observers, oh, I already talked about that. <laughs> There's also the new tournament interface for the Overwatch League. This will allow us to set up everything for scheduled matches ahead of time. This feature also enables the game to pause automatically when a connection drops. Esports fans will appreciate that one. We don't have to wait for an admin to come in and press pause. All of that is now automated. This eliminates human error, and it's gonna really help us preserve the integrity of our matches. So we've built a home for Overwatch League in the game. We've built a home for fans with the Blizzard Arena in Los Angeles. But what about online? A global sports league means global spectators, and we realize that not every fan around the world is gonna be able to watch their team in person. So we think we've come up with the next best thing, overwatchleague.com. 
In the past, the community has done an amazing job in creating and logging uh, esports events. But we want to make it really easy to be a fan of the Overwatch League by building it an official home. On this website, during the preseason, we'll have the full 12 team rosters, a schedule, and a ton of great content, great stories and videos that we built as we build up to the launch of the league. Once the regular season starts, you'll be able to explore statistics for every Overwatch League player, compare them with each other, and this is pretty cool, when you log in with your Battle.net ID, you can see how you stack up to the pros. Uh, the cost of the website? It's free. That's coming soon along with a mobile app, a fully fleshed out companion app, so that you can take Overwatch League with you wherever you go. As I said before, we definitely want to make it easy for you to be a fan. And to facilitate that, the app will be launching with a team favoriting system. Once you specify which team you're cheering for, you'll receive pushes on your phone to let you know when your favorite team is playing. In addition to the features I just mentioned, you'll also be able to watch Overwatch League matches on overwatchleague.com, on the companion app, and other platforms which we'll be announcing in the near future. So if you want to be able to take the Overwatch League with you wherever you go, you also want to be able to show it. One thing I'm excited is that we're going to be launching an online shop where you can buy hats, jerseys, and even socks for every single team. We're going to have league merch like this ridiculous jacket I'm wearing. We're going to make these for the teams too. There, I just said it, so we have to do it. All of these jerseys will be available starting on December 6th, with the full range expanding in January when we launch the regular season. This merch is pretty awesome, guys. I think, I don't know if you saw, we had the World Cup jerseys for sale outside the arena. Something we really want to give you is an opportunity to show your fandom in real life for your teams. All of this is just the beginning. I want to reiterate that we're just getting started with the Overwatch League. I know your expectations are very high. We appreciate you coming along with us as we lay the foundation for what we think is going to be a forever sport. As we move beyond season one, we will be expanding teams to represent more cities in Europe and Asia. We will expand, expand the playing field beyond the Blizzard Arena for the regular season with regular home and away matches. And we will continue to tell the stories and give you the experience to allow you to remain easily connected with your favorite teams and players. Finally, I'm excited to announce that the relaunch to overwatchleague.com is live right now for everyone to explore. We have an extra surprise there for you too. As I said, we're going to do a lot of awesome content around this league. And we've been working on a very special video series over the last year. We're going to give you a preview right now, but be sure to head to overwatchleague.com for the first episode, which is live right now. I can't believe to tell you how excited we all are that finally, after all this time, the league that we've been working so hard to build will soon become a reality. We can't wait for you all to meet these incredibly talented players who have already dedicated so much to this sport. And we'll be along for the ride with you as you watch the countless stories unfold. Be sure to follow us on our social channels, and we'll see you opening week, January 10th to 13th, for the launch of the Overwatch League inaugural season. This is how heroes are born. The biggest and brightest stage possible with thousands of fans in person and millions more online and put the best players in that crucible and see who rises to the top. With a production like the Overwatch League coming, it's sort of just like that's when the game's competitive scene is actually going to start. Everyone can play, everyone can train, just earn your spot. Fans are going to be able to cheer for their home team. Millions upon millions of viewers. They are rivals. You obviously respect your opponents, but in your own mind, you're the best. It's probably my competitive spirit. I want to win really hard. Super exciting from a player perspective to see where it's all going to lead. The biggest opportunity in my life now. The Overwatch League is going to be the league. It will not just be game changing for esports, it will actually be game changing for sports.